Clarksville. We're going to woodshed on this a little bit, <clears throat> focus on the guitar solo section. And this one's really interesting because it's very rare that you get the actual guitar player that plays on the record to actually tell you how he did it and show you how he did it. Um, and in this case, um, we do have that. This, this was played by, so the Monkees, as you may probably know, they, while they were musicians, they didn't play on the records or most of the records that you know of them. Um, most of the musicians that were being played on the on those songs that you know are um, the Wrecking Crew and uh, you know the studio musicians in LA. And the guitar player that plays the lead on this is a guy named Louis Shelton. Um, and he was on a ton of records in the 60s, um, 70s, and into the 80s, I think. And um, I'm gonna link the video where he actually demonstrates and talks a little bit about he, how he played that solo and all the parts that went into it. Um, and I'm going to take some time to do that with us here today, um, slowly, just to break down all the parts too, because I think it's it's one of those solos that is, uh, in one way, it's not super difficult, um, but in other ways, it is. Um, and uh, uh, always, I think it's one that, you know, if you're into classic rock in any way, this is just something you need to know my opinion. Um, okay, so what did he play? He played a telly um, and he ran it through a super reverb. Well, I've got my telly. Actually, it's a broadcaster or anniversary broadcaster, but it's a telly. And that's my super reverb. So um, he, he said he didn't do any pedals into it. They didn't really have pedals in those days. Um, they probably had some EQ and things that they did to augment, but that's pretty much it. It's a telly on your bridge pickup. I've got my volume and tone rolled up. Um, I've got the bright switch on, which I almost never do when I'm playing a Fender, a telly or a Strat into that thing. Um, but on this song, um, it's all about the high end. And um, so I've got the bright switch on. Um, okay, so the chords that are going on but in, during this solo section, and actually pretty much almost the whole song, is G and F. And it's an F plus two. That's got that G note in there. So during the solo, um, uh, those are sort of the chord shapes that are going on underneath. There's actually three things happening during the solo. Um, there's the solo that Louis plays. There's a complementary eighth note, sort of two note thing that's going on underneath what Louis is playing. And then there's chords. Um, so there's three guitar players playing, uh, playing those parts. Um, and we'll go through all three. Okay, so let's start with Louis Shelton's part, the main part. So um, all he's doing is basically playing triads of G and F. And he's alternating those G and F triads up and down the neck. Um, and because the you know triads are flipping, you know, What's the root? What's the third? What's the fifth? You know, those notes are flipping as he's as he's moving those chord shapes up. It it's just an interesting um, uh, uh, interesting sort of pattern um, that emerges throughout that. You're gonna see all these shapes over here on my left hand side um, <clears throat> as I'm going along. But um, let me just start with the shapes first. So the first shape is an open G note on the third, and then I'm I've got my uh, uh, fingers on the third fret of the B and the E string. That's the first shape. The second shape is an F plus two. So it's like that part of an F chord plus your pinky on three. Then we're back to our normal um, sort of the, the triad on a G where it's sort of the, um, the part of a G bar chord, right? But it's just the last three notes. Then it's moving up to your next available F, which is this D shape on five and six. 
And then your next available G up is here. Your next available F is the A shape up here on seven. Up to G, up two frets. Back down. Now we're not gonna go down anymore. That's the farthest down you go at that part of the solo. You're just gonna go back up again. And then here's the only variation. It's an F major seven. Um, so, so it's like, instead of playing this shape of an F, you're gonna bar your finger over on the 10th fret for the first three strings, and you're gonna grab the high E note on 12 on the first string. That makes it an F major seven. And then back to G, F, and that's your, how you end it. So those are the shapes. all the shapes now the nuance and here's where it sort of gets difficult because those shapes maybe aren't you know depending on what your level is they're not <clears throat> they're not super difficult but what makes it difficult is the picking pattern that you're doing with your right hand and some hammer-ons that you're doing because you're gonna incorporate an open open G string throughout this whole thing or almost through the whole thing so the first two shapes you do your picking pattern is like this. I'm going to zoom in on my right hand. And then you're going to go down to your F plus two and do the same thing. Okay. From here on, you're going to do hammer-ons with your open G string onto the shape that you're moving into next. Okay. So that next shape, remember, was this G. But you're going to hammer on and your right hand picking pattern is going to change from what we did on the first two. Um, and what it changes to is going to stay consistent, though, for the rest of the solo that you're going to do up and down the neck for the rest of the shapes. So I'm going to do that again. First time is a hammer on and then you're doing a picking pattern with your rest of the chord there so on the next one the F it looks like this up again That's going to stay consistent for the rest of the solo. Is that F major 7? And then an upstroke to, to end it with that last F chord. Right? So I'm going to go one time through all the way slowly. And let's watch how that goes. So that's an eighth note pattern. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's an eighth. I think those are eighth notes. So from if you notice from the very beginning of the solo all the way, it's an eighth note rhythm all the way through. And that's difficult to sustain that whole time cleanly. I, 
I start to stumble. Um, you know, maybe one time out of 10, I do it. Like I get it all the way through it. But <clears throat> so what I've, what I need to do, um, until I'm good enough to be able to just nail that hundred percent every single time, which will just take practice. You can do it. I can do it. It just takes time. Um, but with my limited ability now, um, the way I can get through that cleanly though, without the stumbles is if I incorporate a pause every once in a while. Um, I'm not doing it on a consistent way. It's not like every other time, but my pause is that I will every once in a while, instead of doing the full eighth notes, I'll do a pause on that last eighth note. And it gives me time to move cleanly to the next chord without having to get that last note in there. Um, and because of what's going on underneath it, which I'll talk about in just a minute, you sort of don't, you don't miss that um, because there's another eighth note that's happening that the second guitar is playing. So when I'm doing it, it sounds something like this. <laughs> myself not doing it the same place every single time um, but that I found that that allows you to gather yourself in that split second cleanly get to the next chord and cleanly pick the next notes um, so maybe it's a cheat maybe it's not I can't tell if he did that when he did it on the record or not or if he cleanly got every single one but you know um, that's a way to really just save yourself as you're going through that okay so let's talk about the second guitar um, lead that's going on. So in the video that Louis is talking about, the solo, um, he has a second guitar player um, that he has do this pattern. Um, so you know this position of a G chord. But he just grabs the last two strings. So index finger on 10 on first string, ring finger on 12 on the second string. That's that part of the G chord. And what he does is uh, a two note pattern. Um, and he alternates from this to this, where you're just raising your ring finger up to 13 and holding on 10 with your index finger. So, so that's cleanly getting the eighth notes in there. So on that last part, if you're taking a pause every once in a while, this part is getting that last eighth note of, of a note struck there. So it, it all works. So that's the part. I never knew that was there all the years listening to the song. And I watched the video of him talking about it. And now that's all I hear when I, when I listen to the song. Um, but yeah, it's there. All right. Now there's a third part that's going on and it's just chords. So, Underneath both of those, there's somebody that's playing a G and an F plus two the whole time. Could be this, and I don't think it matters if you play that shape G or that shape G or that shape G, or I've, I've got the open G string ringing. all good when I do it I do this G but that fills it out so those are the three parts there's the chords giving you foundation there's the eighth note pattern and there's the full triad solo part that you're hearing Louie play and that's it for last train to Clarksville so how was that did you learn something new um, Great song, like I said, it's it's sort of uh, difficult and not difficult at the same time, but uh, that one, that's a fun one. Um, okay, well, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe. If you like what you're seeing, um, click the like button 
and uh, ring the bell and I'll let you know when I'm dropping new content, which I do every single week. And leave me a note in the comments of any song that you'd like me to do a lesson on um, coming up. I'd love to be able to do one that you would want to hear. So let me know in the comments or an email below. And um, uh, also check out Louis Shelton's video where he talks about this solo, which I'll have linked in the description below as well. Um, it's great that you actually have the artist talking about how he did it and, and demonstrating. So, um, okay, well, that's it. Until next week, everybody, take care. Thank you.